A question a lot of us tech enthusiasts have been asking since we saw Apple announce their new cheese grater style Mac Pro, and especially since we've all scrolled through the configuration page and seen the absolutely spit take worthy top price that a machine like this can sell for, is why would you ever buy one of those when you can just build a Hackintosh for a tenth of the price with way more performance? Well, the short answer is that it's not quite that simple. It entirely depends on who's buying it and their use case. See, the hack in Hackintosh is very purposeful. Not only are you, you know, technically violating Apple's terms of service and therefore they could, at least hypothetically anyway, shut all Hackintoshes down with a moment's notice, you're also you know, manually configuring an operating system that is not designed to run on the hardware you are you know, intending on building on, or even if it is, you're still having to manually configure the operating system to run on not genuine Apple hardware. And so there are quite a lot of intricacies, issues that can take days to resolve, and system stability issues that could prevent a number of people from ever even thinking about trying it let alone running it as their main machine. Especially if you plan on running Threadripper, the current third generation chips just flat out aren't supported right now, and even if you went with second gen or standard Ryzen, you'll still be met with a number of issues, stuff like iMessage and the App Store not necessarily working immediately and needing extra steps to resolve that. Uh, also, like I said, system stability issues, and especially because if you're going with the AMD CPUs, OS X is just not designed to run on AMD CPUs, and so there is a lot of other issues that can come from that as well. Most big companies who are actually buying these Mac Pros literally can't afford to have a system crash or have downtime while an IT tech is fixing the Hackintosh machine they threw together. When it's something like a, a you know, movie studio who's making a, a, a very detailed VFX shot for the next Marvel movie, or whether it's game developers who are making high detail models for the next AAA title, like I said, they, they literally cannot afford to have any crashes or instability, and so they'd much rather pay a, a reasonably higher upfront cost for a system from Apple where they know it's going to be stable, it's going to be quiet, and it's going to be reliable. Especially when those big businesses can just write off those expenses as, you know, against their taxes as business expenses, they don't really care if a system costs five or ten times more than it might ought to. Now, of course, for indie creators like me, for example, we don't necessarily have £50,000 lying around for a new PC. And yes, I know the base model Mac Pro starts at £5,500, but a 32 core second gen Threadripper system I spec'd out costs the same, but has 256 gig of, of RAM and eight terabytes of SSD storage and a Radeon 7, whereas the base model Mac Pro comes with just eight cores, 32 gigs of RAM, and I, I cannot believe I'm saying this, but a 5,500 pound computer comes with 256 gig of SSD space, and that's all the storage you get in that ma machine unless you pay them more money. The system I spec'd out literally has the same amount of RAM as the Mac Pro base model has in storage for the same price. <laughs> So yeah, anyway, if you don't have five grand or 50 grand lying around for a new PC, going with a Hackintosh system might be a good way to get a significant amount more performance for your money. Now setting up Hackintoshes can be a pretty involved process, and I wouldn't necessarily recommend you go straight out and buy a full high-end PC, especially if you haven't Hackintosh before, and especially if you then will require that system to be working in a fairly short-term basis for your work. If you are going to start Hackintoshing and you know maybe move your, your workflow to a Hackintosh machine, what I would do is either use any existing systems you have uh, and try Hackintoshing on that and see how it works, or perhaps build a effectively lower end version of a system you would buy. So for example, if you did go with Ryzen, you could buy a decent B450 motherboard and one of the four or six core CPUs, you know, eight or 16 gigs of RAM and, you know, a used RX 470 off of eBay, for example, to keep your cost nice and low, but also means that you could upgrade the CPU, the RAM and the graphics card 
all later down the line once you get your system up and running and make sure that it's actually stable enough for your workflow. Of course, this all relies on the, the idea that you need Apple exclusive software like Final Cut or Logic. Now, I know there are some industries that are quite heavily set in the, the Apple ecosystem. I think mu music production is definitely one of them, and so this may not apply to you, but there are a definite number of uh, other applications you could use, especially for me personally, I use the Adobe Creative Cloud and uh, Suite and Premiere Pro, so uh, that's what I use to edit on, and so if you did already use that on macOS, you could very easily swap over to, to Windows there. There are also a lot of other applications. Of course, Blender is a fantastic, 3D modeling software. I believe you can even do video editing in it if you really want to, and that's supported across basically all of the platforms, including Linux, if you'd prefer that too. So there are quite a lot of options that you might consider switching to. There are already big movie studios using stuff like cross-platform apps like Blender and using them on Windows with, say, Ryzen Threadripper systems, one of which AMD recently featured called Blur Studios, the makers of Terminator Dark Fates. I think they use Blender on Windows there, so that's kind of cool, but you could make the argument that by Apple pricing their macro systems so high above what seems like market rate for the hardware or for at least the performance you're getting from them, they might be pricing themselves out of certain markets and certain companies might start migrating to Windows or Linux with more open source and uh, cheaper tools available. But like I said, it depends on the industry quite drastically. So the TLDR is that the reason most people buy a Mac Pro over Hackintoshing is that you get the stability, you get the reliability, and you get the worry-free experience that Apple is kind of so famous for. Of course, us enthusiasts would love the idea that everyone would just Hackintosh and get much better value for money, but there is a significant time cost that goes into setting up and maintaining a Hackintosh over just buying a pre-built system. And there are a lot of people who aren't willing to sink that time cost in instead of monetary cost. Of course, speaking as a, a tech enthusiast, I have Hackintosh before and I've actually made a few videos about it. And so if you're interested in Hackintoshing yourself, then you can check out those guides. There's also a fantastic guide by Snazzy Labs, especially if you want to use a Ryzen CPU. So I'll remember to leave uh, either in the cards or in the end cards um, if you want to check those out. Otherwise, if you have any thoughts on this, I would love to hear them in the comments down below. Would you pick up a Mac Pro for your professional workflow or would you go with a Hackintosh? Would you go with Linux or Windows? Let me know in those comments down below. You can also support the channel by hitting that subscribe button for more videos like this one every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And if you want to support the channel further than just you know watching these videos and subscribing, then you can check out the links in the description down below. There's a load of stuff like Amazon and Overclock Shikate affiliate links that don't cost you anything to use, but massively help me out when you do use them. Or there's stuff like merch for hoodies or t-shirts like this one, or a load of other designs, and a load of other stuff too, like Streamlabs or VS if you want to start streaming. Otherwise, that is pretty much it. Feel free to check out some more videos over there. And that is pretty much it. I'll catch you guys in the next video.